So with that, I'm going to go to Brother Mark Stevenson. Mark. Hey, 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 everybody. Thank you, Roz. Thanks. Thank you, Brother Arthur and everybody else that's in this space right now. I think I think it's important that 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 right now we're we're at the, we're on the precipice of changing the way black is black is identified in this country. Um, we are on the precipice of of deaggregating data um, for our people, so we have to keep the push on HR forty as it's currently written has to be rejected. We cannot let Sheila Jackson Lee and her little cronies continue to to gatekeep and push this down. Because we've seen what happened in Evanston. We saw what happened in Evanston. We see that that reparations bill was horrible. Now, if you counted that and you see what activism does and you look at what AB 3121 has been doing in California, it is completely different. That's because freedmen are, are pushing the envelope in California and, and are not allowing gatekeepers to try to come in and circumvent the system. We, uh, so we have to be strategic. And when 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 we are, when we going after these politicians, because we they have to understand, we have to push back on every single time they want to flat blackness. We have to push back on every single time they want to put everybody from the diaspora, or anything else, into our claims. And we we have to push back on the idea that the the freedmen are. We have to push back on the idea that freedmen and everybody else are the same. We are not. We have a separate. We have a separate issue with, with this country. And we need the data to be deaggregated so we can see the true picture. So then we really can fight against it, fight about what's going on. And a lot of it, a lot of it is because we, we as freedmen have always viewed everybody in the diaspora as being like us. And we, and so that has allowed some people to shoehorn their way into reparations claims, just like Sheila Jackson Lee wants to give reparations out to every black person. No, it has to be, it has to be, for Freeman, it has to be and this bill has to be written by Freeman, has to be about Freeman, and it has to be about our plight in a discussion. And if the politicians are, are not willing to to, to 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 go on that boat, then we have to look at them and their background to see if they are actually a Freeman or if they come from one of these immigrant backgrounds. Because they're gonna push policies that push their interests. It's time for us to push policies and elect people who push our interests. And I'm just going to, I'm going to land my plane on that one. God bless to the Freedman family, everybody who's listening. Um, and I, I'm just going to fall back and, and not say anything else right now. All right. Thank you, Brother Mark. Mark um, is um, one of the assembly co-presidents and he's been working diligently for, for the several years since uh, the Ob Obama administration before the Obama administration, like me, and um, yeah, we 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 go through things and 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 dig into it and dig our heels in. And if it's not good for our people, it's not going to happen. We're not going to support it. Like I say, a lot of times they do this little bait and switch thing. Oh, this for reparations. Then people are like, yeah, but when you dig into it and you find out it's bad for your people, then it's bad for you, and you cannot support it, not if you're being serious about it. Um, uh, fear this. You, you you got your hand up, brother. Okay, yeah, I wanted just to say, um, and Mark, this is a good, very good um, comment, uh, points you made, brother. Um, I was just, just looking at the fact that, you know, like now we have, a bundle of information and points and uh, facts and references. Now it's like we got to be in overdrive of what we're doing. We have to we got to show commitment and ways in the ways and means to counter all that is not in our demands for our um, progressive or for our benevolence. And is we have to do it now. We we have no other. Ch time to be waiting around and thinking that it's just going to happen by sitting up, you know, sitting up religiously and clapping your hands and waiting around and praying and stuff. You got to be, you got to emphasize, if it's going to be like that, you got to emphasize your prayer. And I'm not going that route to talk about that, but I'm just saying we have to be very, like, like right now, look at, look at the, um, the Lieutenant Governor from uh, Virginia. Uh, I forgot her name, but 
you know, with how, some how sears. Is that you going to with just, some sears. Hmm? When yeah, yeah, sears. Yeah, yeah, sears. Yeah. How how is that you gonna tell people and you come from another country? You come from the Caribbean. How are you gonna tell a whole group of people in the United States to forget about slavery? How how is that? How is that you have that the now the Supreme Court um person that um, uh Biden has appointed? She's another one. She's she's from the Caribbean again. I mean, it's like there are all these people that are looking like skin folk are basically not kin folk. And even with that to being kin folk, if you are committing crime, if you are showing yourself to be of not our plight to flight, you basically a sin folk because it doesn't make any sense how. You are distorting our narrative in this country, and it's making it look, making us look so much of a, a a type of loss in the sauce of a people, with with just thinking about the all the things that we have done to make our enriching history so prevalent for anybody to understand who we are. But it's like Jews did something for twelve years to help the Holocaust, Jewish Holocaust, twelve years ho- Holocaust. They get more. Uh, praise and recognition for just that but you can say 12 times 36 or some more years we've been doing this thing over 400 some years and how is that you know you're going to tell us to just forget about slavery just forget about the most atrocious institution to ever be, be put on humane people american freemen Come on, I mean, you, you, we got to stand out and let people know, look, you're not just going to tell me, forget about my stuff. And still, we ain't, <laughs> well, look, before reparations happens, you got to be in repair mode. And repair mode is educational mode. You got to start educating your people, educating your surroundings, educating your community, educating especially the youth. You can't let this stuff down. You can't let your guard down. You got to be about your stuff, man, because that's the only way reparations will happen when you repair first. You have to repair. But let me stop. Go ahead. Hey, All you right. know what, you, though? One of, you know, Go you ahead. made a very uh, good point, but, but fairness, the reason why, the reason why uh, Jews get all of this press, and you also got to remember, despite the fact that there is still a lot of anti-Semitic, active anti-Semitism going on in the majority white population, don't forget that, was because of the fact that Jews took full ownership of their issue and put the energy behind putting it out there and making people listen. And I can't blame them for that. I, I you know, as a matter of fact, I look at them as the example of the, of the way that we need to carry on our business. There is no way that Jewish organizations would allow this kind of management slippage this kind of policy intrusion that black people have allowed because of our blindness in regards to flat blackness. There would be no way that a Chinese person would be running a reparations program in a particular city like we have a Jamaican running a reparations program in Evanston for American Freedmen. That would never happen. But partly it's because we haven't been on our business. And what we're at, what we're exhorting today is for us to get on our business, to contact these congressmen, make them understand that you are the employee and we are the employer, and you need to withdraw your co-sponsorship of HR 40 if that's what he or she has done. All right. Thank you, Arthur. I'm going I'm to get to you in a second, Sadiku and A, a- Boogie. I'm going to get to you. I just wanted to um, just set the room again because it's like 10, 19. We're basically going through an action item. Action items are open items that we want you to share with your family and friends. And we do have links at the top. I showed you guys one of my posts. Uh, we're having you to contact your U.S. House of Representative or Congressman 
not the senator, the congressman, and to be basically be able to tell them if they are in the HR 40, that's on congress.gov, and you put, type in HR 40, you go to the tab that has the actual bill, and their names will be on top, and you just got to look through, and it's a bunch of them, and find their name. And if they are in there, you're going to call your congressman and ask them to withdraw their co sponsorship. And they had we have uh, listed out the reasons why uh, we can go over that again if you'd like. But basically, they're you know the organizations that are running this are running it in a, a federal, state, and local management of the, of the reparations funds, and they're going to be running off of our reparations. So they're they're trying to set themselves up between the Treasury Department and your money. And like the sister Cindy B came in and said, you're not going to see any of that money. And First Repair also showed you, you're not going to see any of that money coming directly into you. They think that we're children. They know that organizations that were originally set up to, to really kind of gatekeep or look for look out for our interests when they were originally set up, like, I, I mean, like the NAACP. I'm sure they don't know or they don't care about any of this. I'm sure of it because they are not finding out the information we are. And we're sharing that information with you in such uh, Twitter spaces like this, because you need to know. We're trying to have you get direct cash payments from the Treasury Department, just like every other individual who has been deemed worthy of reparations in this country. We don't need these organizations of Narcan and Cobra because they've been working on this thing for 35 years, so they say. But in three years ago, I think it was like very few people, I want to say about three or four people, maybe two, just two people that had signed on to HR 40 until we got involved. So when we got involved and people started coming in, yeah, yeah, and now they're using that HR 40 as a cover. If you say, do you believe in reparations? I support HR 40. They don't even know that HR 40 is not about direct cash payments. And they want to negotiate in all of this behind closed doors, very clandestine, secret-like. Mm -hmm. And we know stuff, crazy stuff happens in the dark and secret. And they don't even want the transcripts going out. They don't allow us to even get in on their town halls to make comment and to say that this is garbage and we're not going to stand for it. And honestly, I mean, you can't get between... I know a lot of people out here in these crazy crooked streets. You can't get between our people and their reparations money. I don't even mm -hmm. understand how people think that they can do that. It's like they are the one thing they are not they are not looking for is is you and me. They're not expecting you to be as as knowledgeable as you are right now. And we're trying to get you all to contact your congressman and tell them no to HR 40 and do like I did in the Jumbotron. I said, I just called my congressman and told him no to HR 40. So did my brother and parents. Did you call yours? Okay. And we're trying no. to post that as an actionable item all over Twitter and Facebook and IG or wherever you are. And if you have all three accounts, then post them on all three accounts and just say that, say that same thing so that we, that people are like, no, to HR 40, like what, what, what? And they see us and they see it's all over because that's going to make that go viral, right? That's mm -hmm. what I want to see go viral, an actionable right. item where you have shown, it's sort of like your I voted sticker. This is your I called sticker, okay? Right. Give yourself an I call sticker after you do that work. Sure, it's no, you know, I can't give you a sticker. If I could, I would. But give yourself that sticker once you make that phone call and call it for your parents, your grandparents, whoever, they don't know how to use the computer, a lot of them. So just call with them. Call on a conference call. And say, hey, yeah. my grandmom or whatever is 85. She doesn't know how to use She's on the line right now. This is her zip code. And she said no to HR 40. And the only thing grandma says, is, that's right, baby. I don't want that HR 40. They're going to record her response. Two, 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 two items, too. 
uh, before uh, two items. When you render no to HR 40 hashtag, render it hashtag capital N small o to capital HR 40. The reason why is because when you put the small o there, it's easier to read at a glance. It's Just immediately like recognizable in an instant. Okay, you so don't that? put a capital O, put a small O. Second thing, let me tell you something that will get under your skin a little bit, maybe. Even John Conyers was hoodwinked. Let me tell you what happened. Uh, Conrad Warwill, who was the male co-chair of Encobra before uh, Cam Howard, is the one that encouraged... Um, uh, uh, John Conyers to hand the bill to Sheila Jackson Lee. Why? Because Sheila Jackson Lee, as the daughter of Jamaican immigrants, was more likely to redo or allow HR 40 to be redone as a gateway to a pan African, to pan African type legislation. So, in actuality, uh, he was fooled because like when H.R. 40 was first rendered, it was for us, American freedmen, okay? It did not get redone until after Sheila Jackson Lee got her hands on it. Uh, as a matter of fact, because of the universalist uh, stance that Encobra took, many people who were heavily involved with reparations with or associated with Encobra, broke with Encobra. I don't know if any of you guys know a, a Los Angeles lawyer by the name of Robert L. Brock. He's probably in his late 80s or early 90s right now. But he got into it with Conrad with Will. He got into it with Conrad with Will because he wanted reparations, if they're distributed, to be directly from the Treasury like every other reparations program is. And so since Conrad was uh, adamant about uh, these commissions being set up to redistribute reparations, not only to American freedmen, but also to Caribbean and African immigrants, they stayed uh, 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 at odds with each other until Conrad Morrill's death. So I just want y'all to know that, that, that little blurb of history. Thank you, Arthur. Okay, Sadiko, it is 1027. You have a couple of minutes, sir. Okay, here's my question. Um, I just wanted to make sure that um, we're successful with this uh, endeavor, with this action. So would you advise that we, we have this meeting or have this space once a week, come back next Wednesday, following Wednesday at whatever time you choose, maybe even nine o'clock just to see how it's going as far as who has been able to get the word out and who has contacted their congressman and asked them to withdraw their co-sponsorship. I just want this to be mm -hmm. successful and that we're just not um, coming and meeting uh, speeding, spinning our wheels. I just want to see us be successful with this uh, plan and if we can meet here once a week and just to gather our people and gather the momentum because my understanding is only two right now the bill only needs two more co-sponsors in order to go before uh um, I... The full house, right, right. before the full house. Mm -hmm. Well, what we're doing, uh, we're doing, we have been doing our weekly meetings, uh, not meetings, but it's, it's a Twitter space. And um, we were trying to just run it as an educational piece. Next Wednesday, we won't be able to, to do any kind of follow-up. I'm wanting people to do the hashtag no to HR 40 like I did in the Jumbotron. And it's like, okay, this is who I had personally called, you know, my congressman and, and you know, reached out to or whatever the case. So we should be able to start seeing those posts. That's one, uh, you know, on social media. 
But um, we are going to have other Twitter spaces. That's why we wanted to, you know, just see it, start seeing it. And also when we get into these uh, spaces that are dealing with politics, we need to start sharing, you know, this information. It's, it's great to um, express maybe our frustration, but I want people to do something, right? I mean, it's, I mean, for me, I'm an action person. I'm a, you know, strategist. I, I don't feel right just sitting here, just expressing myself at this point in my life. I want to do something, and this is doing something. But um, once we start seeing that that sticker of, look, me and my spouse or my grandparents or what, whatever, you don't have to say their names. It's none of the people business. Just say, hey, both of you know, like if somebody's a millennial and they have both a set to their grandparents and they call for them, me, my grandparents and my aunts and uncles all call. We, we told our, you know, um, congressmen, no to HR 40 with a uh, hashtag no N O small O to HR 40 and just start sharing that, that right there. And then we start seeing it and seeing and seeing it. It will make that impact because that's, that's what it is. It's an actionable item and we could just put that out there. So I should be able to see it. You should be able to see it. And um, like I said, we're going to try to be pushing this week and asking you all to join us. When you get in the spaces, please just push it. Tell people, say, look, guys, this HR 40 is some garbage. However you talk to people, it's whatever. And tell them why. And tell them, say, we're doing this. And they start seeing it. If you need a copy it from what I have, then do it. I, I don't mind, please. Use the tools that are available. If they don't know who their congressman is, then it's in the jumbotron at the top, right? We have se several ones. So we want you to share this information. Let's make this Twitter space work to our advantage. I mean, we could be on here telling jokes and whatever else, but that's not going to get us anywhere. I'm just trying to uh, work with you all in order to be able to make an actionable item that we can clearly see is going to start picking up. Why? Because the more people that know about it and the more people that know that reparations is at, at, in the balance that can be going to some other organizations to block it or stop it to go into their pockets, then the more people I think will make that phone call. What do you think? Sadiqa, did I answer your question? Well, yes. I I just want to see more adamant action uh, amongst us as a people on a consistent basis where we're actually coming back and reporting because I think we have to gather the momentum among our people in order to, just like we had the the uh, reverse momentum where we was calling them, asking them to be co-sponsors and even calling the other Congress people who wasn't co-sponsored and asked them to make sure they co that they were co-sponsored on the bill. I think we need to be just as adamant about getting our people to call and make sure they get their uh, respective congresspersons to withdraw their support from the bill. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for us to make sure that we are adamant because it is at the point where it can go across the, uh, across the uh, uh, bow and become you know, something that Congress votes on and then it's on its way to the Senate. And I think we should be adamant about just like stopping it, like getting right in there and say, no, call and get your congressman to stop it. And I will bring it up at some other uh, spaces also, but I also yeah. would encourage them. We need to encourage our people because sometimes it's just not going to be one call and say, do it. They need guidance and, and some of them have to be held by the hand. They got to you know, be adamant. And then some congressperson may be a little bit, you know, unsure of themselves of how they're going to do it, but uh, or if they should do it. So we got to be pushing for them to let them know, like, no, we need 10, 20, 30, 40 people to call in to that particular congressperson. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Well, maybe because we, maybe, maybe, we were talking about moving to the weekend, right, Bros? Yeah, we were. We were. We, we were talking about moving to one day on the weekend, like next weekend. 
Uh, not yeah. not the fifth and sixth, but the following weekend, because we normally have Wednesday um, sessions. But we we can do a follow up to see if people actually did whatever the because we were. Um, this is one of the action items that we find is really uh, necessary, right? So one of the things we did and started this particular space is you know what kind of like slow walk people through where. And how to and and how to call and you know even if you don't speak to your congressman on the initial call, you're recording the um, disapproval of, of asking them to to withdraw from HS co-sponsorship of HR 40 with the uh, the congressional aide that answers that phone. So if they're probably not going to put you right in touch with the congressman, they're going to ask you, what did you need? You say, hey, I'm a constituent for congressman, whatever their last name is. And I want to ask them, I see they're on their sponsor of H.R. 40 because I have the bill in front of me. Their name is on it. I want to ask them to withdraw their sponsorship from H.R. 40 because... They, this money is going through different agencies and it's not direct payments. This bill is going to be negotiated in secret behind closed doors with it. And we're not we're not a part of any of this. This is not a good bill. This thing needs to die. When it, kill this bill, whatever. That, that I want to record my response. Here's hey, my, Roz, Roz, you know, good morning. Good morning, Roz. I'm sorry. To cut Hold you on off. a second. Hold on a second, fam. Hold I'm, I'm, a second. I'm trying to get your talking points. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to write them. Yeah. The, the 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 three talking points is this. First, lack of specificity. That's number one. Number two, secrecy in deliberations and no access to transcripts. And number three, driven by two Pan-African organizations that you don't approve of, NARC and Encobra, uh, let them know that you've read their, their websites and you're not, you're very concerned about the direction that these organizations want to take reparations into. Those are the three talking points. You got that. I'm, my apologies, fam. I, I was on a roll. I, I apologize. Okay. I was, I was just talking in narrative form and didn't break it out like Arthur yeah, did. Uh, no, you, no problem. You did, you did it earlier, but but I wasn't uh, taking, I wasn't taking notes. So I'm taking notes now, and I'm actually about to do this right now. So I, I made a few yeah. calls before, but I just want to make sure I'm contacting because I was calling everybody in Illinois. So I ain't care. <laughs> but you know who to call now, right? You know who to call in in your in, that's your congressperson. And yeah, they gave they gave me the info. But look, I don't give a damn. I'm calling everybody. Right, and then get your if you had uh, in the room with like a family member, a neighbor, or somebody that's you know get hey, just hand them the phone or hey, you got mask on, y'all doing some social distance. Just have them say their zip code or their name or whatever. Hey, I'm the neighbor. Uh, that's my boy. I can't. No, I can't believe y'all are doing this, man. Y'all better kill that HR forty bill, whatever. And his rec response will be recorded too. So, like Arthur was saying earlier, you know, it you you could be mm -hmm. running an errand and you talking to people. If you could talk about the weather, I know it's snowing in Chicago or whatever. It's supposed to snow here in the DMV tomorrow. We'll see about that. But you could talk about the weather. You could talk about some things, too, that are going to affect our pockets, right? And that's the yeah. HR 40. And if the people don't know who to call, I don't care. You can make little slips of paper and say, here, here's the governor. Uh, I mean, not the governor. I'm sorry. <laughs> here's our congressman in this area, whatever the case may be. Call him up. This is his phone number. This is name and phone number. And hand those out to people and say, look, you got Twitter, your daughter or son, they right there. And they teenagers or they college. Okay. 
tell them to put no to HR 40. Put all that stuff on the like a little slip of paper. And those kids, they like doing stuff like that. They will they will help their parent out or whatever the case may be. But we want that out there. We want the no to HR 40. Um uh, uh you know, hashtags going around. I just call my congressman. Cause that right, right there is a badge you know of honor. Yes. The sir. other thing too, folks. A thousand times, a thousand times, I keep telling everybody, read their website. Everything they intend to do is right there. That's where I get my information from. The one that, the one that, the particular one that you do, you go to Google and you put who should receive reparations, NARC. And that particular part of their website will come up and you can see all the nasty things that they intend to do with reparations right there. The other thing, uh, I'm hoping that anybody on this, on this uh, space that does spaces make more spaces regarding this, this particular subject. Uh, and anybody that is doing a space, DM me on, on Twitter. Uh, and I will give you, again, the three main points that you should be talking to with your congressman, because these three main points are actually embedded in H.R. 40. Lack of specificity, oh. secrecy and deliberations, and driven by two pan-African organizations that, don't, that you don't approve of, and so on and so forth. Now, I'll, I'll give, them, give you the exact uh, language. You know what, Arthur? Um, but let, let me, if you do this, because put them on your tweet and I'll put them in the Jumbotron. But because okay. this is the thing I want to be able to do, fam. If y'all need us to come into a Twitter space and you uh, DM us and, and say, we hey, do. or whatever, then we'll pop in there. I mean, I, I spent Sunday, I wasn't doing anything Sunday. I ate like breakfast but i was just you know chopping off heads and and you know on some crazy stuff that people were doing i woke up me and angie <laughs> that was funny but we had somebody this was funny because they boomed the room i mean it was like wow really i never had that happen before i felt like you know but i wasn't gonna let people just slick talk their way to people that don't know um I wasn't going, that's, that's not, I'm not, I'm not about that line life. So uh, <laughs> uh, I really, you know, we need to let people know what's going on. We need to do an actionable item. We need to make people know what's up. And what I'm going to go do is, I'm sorry, A Boogie hadn't, you, you had your hand up for a minute. I'm going to let you talk and then I'm going to let Lazy uh, come in. At, no, you, uh, are you good, Roz? I got, I got everything you, I needed. I just needed oh, you talk did, bro. Okay, okay, that's cool then. I'm gonna let Lazy come in, fear this, then you can come in, brother, okay? Uh Lazy, you have uh it's ten forty two. If you have two minutes, sis. Thank you, um, Queen. Thank you so much for having me. I just popped in because somebody just shared the space and I am um, uh while it's on my mind now, I want to get in con in contact with my local congressman now, but I caught the tail end of what you were telling us to say. So if you don't mind, and I do apologize, if you don't mind, could you just repeat what we need to uh, express to our congressmen when we're calling to um, ask them to withdraw their support of uh, HR 40? Oh, okay. I'm, 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 I'm writing it up right now, and I'm about to tweet it so she can put it in the jumbotron. But, but, so but mainly, but, late, but, late, but, but while you're on the line, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll say it. first is lack of specificity as to who should receive re reparations. Number two is secrecy and deliberations and no access to transcripts. And three is driven by two Pan-African organizations that you don't approve of, Narcan and Cobra, and their websites have a reparations uh, direction that you don't approve of. Okay, I'm, I'm just writing this down. Okay, uh, we're going to also, Arthur, when Arthur 
uh, types it up one, two, three, we're going to post it in the Jumbotron for you. So that'll okay. help, you know, so you can, you don't have to really write it and you could cut, you know, cut and paste or whatever, share, share it out and, and share it to your family because that's important, right? I mean, like I was just saying, Daisy, a little bit earlier, it, it's, it's great to have these Twitter spaces. They kind of really messed up when they let us just have it, right? So mm -hmm. now we're trying to, you know, educate our people and tell them, say, this is, you know, this is what what's going on behind the scenes. Because a lot of people are not reading the, the fine print or they're not comparing what's in HR 40 along with what's in Narkin and Cobra's website. And if you look at it, it's a nightmare. They are trying to take our money and use it for their own operations. And that's diabolical because they're cool and they're very tight with the members of Congress. And when that happens, it's a problem because people okay, may just, think they're doing the right thing tweeted. and they're, they're not helping us with what we need. Yes. Who is that, Arthur? Yeah, I just tweeted it. Okay, thank you, Arthur. I'm going to go in there um, and, and share it with everybody. Okay. Uh, fear it is. Yeah, oh. I wanted just to add. I want, yeah, I, I just want to be kind of quick. But, uh, yeah, I just want to add for the family. It's like when you look at how NARC and NCOBRA are working, and, and uh, yeah, like uh, like y'all said, you know, they're working with uh, Congress people already. What what we become, we become the counter the counter um, initiative against what they're doing. But this is the thing, though. This is this is what people got to realize. It's like, how do you align with, um, not say well, I guess mimicking or copying or being aligned with CARICOM, which is the Caribbean Community for Reparations. Now they're going after the British for what they. Um, demand from slavery of what happened to them. CARICOM has nothing in no regards to anybody of our vernacular or our diaspora in the United States to be for us to be with what they have. So why is it that in COBRA, NARC are aligning themselves with CARICOM and having people of the um, of, of, of the skin folk, you would say, to, to be within their chambers or in their organization to make um, power moves for them when it does no purpose, of course, for the people of this country that built the country, which is who we're talking to. Why? I mean, it's like you got to put things in the perspective of like, what does the purpose serve of you aligning yourself with CARICOM that has something for specifically for the people of of that region of the of, you know the world, whatever you want to call it. But what I'm saying is that because of two reasons, it serves no purpose for us. It's like it, it, well, not for us. It doesn't. Doing it? Hmm? It, okay, it, but it serves a purpose for them. It's for two yeah, reasons. Yeah, it's like it's, 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 all, it's not for okay. a, a collective. Uh, it's not supposed to be for a collective. Yeah. Any reparations program is supposed to be for a specific group. Specific group. That's right. Okay. Not a collective. A collective means a group of groups. <laughs> okay. No. But I mean, um, it's like, but see, it's like, I was looking at, I was trying to chuck. Like, let, let, let me, let me, let me explain why. Yeah. Let me explain why. First of all, remember that the, both of these organizations have a pan African focus. Number two. Both of these organizations, especially NARC, have actual members that are from the diaspora. So now these, these people are not going to be involved in an organization just to work for reparations for you. They're going to work for reparations for you and me, or me and you, in that order. You understand what I'm saying? So yes, they're going to do everything they can to steer reparations, the resources, the management, and the administration into as much as they into their hands as possible. And they're able to do this because on the other side of the line, mostly black people in general don't really pay attention to our politics. You got black men out there that'll tell you about the details of NBA and, and NFL backwards, forwards, inside and outside. But when you ask them about this issue, 
Their eyes get all big. What you talking about, man? That's where we are as a people. So it takes a, a few of us, this devoted few, to really get on it and make things uh, right for our people. It's also up to the devoted few to enlighten the people out in the street and within our families and our neighbors as to what's happening so they can wake up and be about their money. Man, That's um, I, I would like to also make a, a comment in regards to um, the reason why HR 40 is written the way it is. And <clears throat> everyone's already, already made comment about the fact that a lot of people in the diaspora already had their hands in it. Um, Think of it like this, you know how mostly in our, specifically in our communities, rather than um, build up something um, at the grassroots specifically for us, you have certain people, um, certain lineages that will build up something for their progeny in the sense where they will come in and they will run the organization. And it, it will be something that they will pass on to their children. You know, this is the way that people build institutions. And institutions are nothing more than gates that we as freedmen usually have a difficult time going through. Now, I said this to mean this, that Narkin and Cobra, if we allow them to proceed as they are, then it will be another obstacle that we will have to endure with, just like every other institution within this nation, for another 100, 150, two, if not longer. And guess what? Depending on what their goal is, they can direct us any way they can. They can hurt us. And that's something that we as a collective don't want. So, again, I plead with Every one of my freedmen, brothers and sisters, let's get the work done. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Uh, I wanted to um, say something, too, while we're still on mute real quick. Um, uh, fear this, brother, you had mentioned something earlier, and I look at, I take a different perspective at it, because you were talking about Winsome Sears, who's the <laughs> lieutenant governor of Virginia, newly elected, now, honestly, when people are voting for governor and lieutenant governor, I, I mean, I wasn't thrilled about McAuliffe either. Um, and I, but sometimes I look at these politics like a chess move. Nobody really gives a darn about the lieutenant governor. You know, they aren't policy making. They aren't the. That's like the vice president on the federal level, on the state level, rather. But. Um, they people did not necessarily vote for Winsome Winsome uh, Sears. They voted for Yunkin, Glenn Yunkin, and he was her. Uh, she was his pick, but she's in that position to show a black face in the place because they think that we're still confused people. And many of us, let's be honest, are. If they see somebody with a black face, because that happened in Maryland uh, some years ago, and um, they had a Republican governor, and they said, oh, this will be the first black lieutenant governor, da, 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 and they didn't even, they just saw his face. They didn't say that he was a Democrat, Republican, what the policies were. People voted based upon, oh, we get the first black lieutenant governor. That's what they uh, that's what they did. And uh, they're thinking that our people are still so caught up in just color, not anything dealing with policy or who is this person or whatever the case. So she was used as, uh, 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 I guess, a, a shill for people that don't do their research. And they said, oh, we could get a first black lieutenant governor in Virginia, right? So I'm glad it happened because it helps wake the hell up out of the people, right? You got to be able to see the game with what they're playing. And if she wasn't in there saying what she did, I'm glad she said what she did because that gives you an insight as to who she actually is. She has no regard and no respect for Friedman because she came from Jamaica. 
in the 60s. She doesn't, she doesn't represent us at all, right? So that's another, you, it's, it's like something you don't have to, you don't have to have everybody agreeing with you, but when they open their mouth and reveal who they are, please believe them. So that's who she is. And it's no hiding that and saying, oh, well, she's still black or whatever. No, no, no. She's a Jamaican woman. If you were to go to Jamaica and talk about the, the people that are the Maroons and saying that, oh, no, the Maroons should not get anything from CARICOM, then you would not probably ever leave Jamaica. I'm not saying this as a warning to her or anything. I'm just saying how, you know, they would not let you as an American, as a U.S. freedman, go over there and start talking about how they should be getting their CARICOM money. So she's not qualified. I mean, you don't have to threaten a woman or anything. Just say, you know, I've seen other responses coming in, and I was very proud of our Freedman people because they basically were saying professionally, ma'am, you are not qualified to speak on our behalf. This is from the U.S. Freedman. You're, uh, I'm sorry, the American Freedman. You are not qualified to speak on our behalf about chattel slavery. And I was so proud of us for even saying that because we're letting them know, putting them on notice that a black face in the place just is not going to cut it. This is not us. This is who we are. So we are disaggregating, which means we're breaking apart this blackness just like the Asians do. The Chinese person is not the same as a Japanese or a Korean or a Filipino or a Laotian or any, you know, they're not the same thing. And they break them apart. We need to disaggregate who we are from anybody else based upon just skin color is not going to cut it. So with that, we're going to open it back up. Um, and you know but, what? With the, with, the, with the thing about we got to get off the color thing, and she's right. Absolutely. You would never find a Chinese, a Chinese person running any issue or organization that's for Japanese people. Never. Ever. There's a difference between Nathan Bedford Forrest, who's a white man, the founder of the Ku Klux Klan, and John Brown, another white man, who died to try to abolish slavery. It's policy, not color. I think we I think we get a lot of it mixed up and twisted because we need to understand who we are and we need to know and respect that. And I'm glad that everyone on here understands that they're uh, American freedmen and it's written into that congress.gov. I mean, there are, what, over three million times that we're mentioned in uh, laws in the, in, the, in the country, especially in Congress from 1863 until, like, I think present day. So I want you guys to go in there and just put in Friedman and it'll pull it up. Okay. So um on that I'm gonna open up the um open up the lines and let, let you guys come back in. I'm sorry, who was next? Anybody? I didn't see any hands up. Angie or Arthur, did you see anybody's hands up? No, not at all. No, okay. not, not, no, I didn't. All right. I don't want to skip anyone. Anybody have any questions about the action item that we're we're work we're doing at this time, or you need to copy anything that we have here, Arthur Ward? I did post Arthur Ward's um, uh, link in the jumbotron. Lack of specificity and who should receive reparations. Uh, there's uh, secrecy in deliberations and no access to transcripts driven by two Pan-African organizations that you don't approve of is Narkin and Cobra and their reparations intent and direction is not good for us. So please copy that or copy and paste it, go to it so you know what to say and share that with your family. Okay, I'm letting somebody else in. And like I said, hold on a second. When you do come in, I'm going to give the time. And um, who was my speaker? Charles P. 
Uh, it is 11.58. Yes, sir. You have a couple of minutes by which to speak on this. If you have any questions or comments. Good morning, family. So I got a quick question for you. Uh, so we're only supposed to call the congressman in our district. Is that correct? Well, you can, yes, if you call the, con but most of the time, this is what happens. When you call the congressman in your district, they're going to ask you for your zip code and they are going to check that. I'm going to let you know right now. So if you put your zip code in and then you call back tomorrow and put in somebody else's zip code, then you start calling all over the country. They're going to know right away if you're not one of their constituents. So please don't do that. But if you have, say, for instance, I'm just going to say California, just because it's a huge state, you are in a district and your cousin or uncle or somebody's in a different district, um, you can call and help them. You can call and get on a conference call and say what needs to be said. And they say, yeah, I'm. I, this is my zip code and I live here and I, yeah, no to that HR 40 or whatever. They're going to record it as if they call, right? Because they're on there, they gave their name, they're in, they gave their zip code, because that's what they go by now. Now, back in the day, you could call anybody, and they'll be like, okay, I'll record that, I'll record that. But now they're very specific in Congress about, wait a minute, you're not in my district, so I'm not going to record this, and why am I even talking to you? Kind of, sort of. That cuts down on their calls. But if you're calling from that, you know, like I said, on a conference call with somebody from a different part of California, say you're in uh, San Diego and your cousin or somebody is in San Francisco or Oakland, then they have a different congressperson. So you calling on a three-way to help grandma or your cousin or whomever lives in a different district, that's fine because you're say, hey, I'm just helping my grandma or my granddad or whomever. And they say, yeah, I, I don't want you know, I'm saying I know to HR 40, if that's all they say in my in their name, um, you know, Charles Brown or whatever the case may be, Mary Brown, and I live at, you know, whatever the zip code is, they're going to record that call. And you what I want you to do at that point in time, you can make us, you know, I got on the phone with my, you know, you know, grandmom and granddad or, and, and called and we said no to HR 40. You could actually post it twice if you want, because you were calling two different, you know, two different um, places, two different congressmen, right? So All that right. we Thanks. want you to post that on, no problem, brother. We want you to post that on social media, post it on Twitter, post it on Facebook, post it on IG, um, and let people know that you made that call to your congressman and no to HR 40. There is a sample of it I had put up there in uh, the jumbotron. That's what. That's actually a post, but that's what happened. I had my family members there, and, and they all just basically live in the same uh, zip code. And I said, "Hey, you know, they want to make a statement too." And they just gave their name, and that's four. You know, four people that's recorded on. Now I got to call my other family members that live in the in the same district and do the same thing. And you best believe I'm gonna make another post. Because I'm giving myself another sticker for that. Hey, I call my uncle and aunts and cousins and brothers and, and, and nephews and niece. You understand what I'm saying? So I want you in, to do that. And I, I don't care how long they have to hold on the phone. If it's 20 people, what difference does it make? That's what they're there for. They work for you and me. Yes, okay. and as far as social media, because you all you guys, most of you guys are way younger than me, and y'all know what to do. I'd, I'd like to see you guys, including myself, do everything that we can to make no to HR forty a trending hashtag. And it's a trending hashtag. Was, with a, it's a trending hashtag with a purpose because you have an action item attached to it. The, the right. way you're putting it up is not just no to HR 40, no to HR 40. You're putting that I called, you know, you could say 20 of my family members, you know, called or whatever the case may be. And we all said no to HR 40. Somebody else might call in. It's two people. Somebody else may call in. It's just them. 
that's fine. We want to see that node HR40 is attached to an actionable item that you've already done. So we're not going to be complaining. We're going to be bragging, basically. Everybody got that family? Some people say, are you bragging or complaining? Uh, no, nah, we're going to be bragging. This is what I've done. I've taken an action, and I'm. this is what I'm doing. Have you done it too? That's what I said at the end. Did you call yours? I called my congressman and told him, no to a hashtag no to HR40. So did my brother and parents. Did you call yours? 